In this video, I'll give an introduction to time series and discuss the concept of stationarity. First, let's consider cross-sectional data and just review a few things. Say we have observations x1, x2, all the way up to x capital N. So capital N is our sample size. We think of these as being draws from a fixed distribution. We also note that there's no ordering of the data we can change the ordering of the axis, it doesn't really matter. We usually assume that the axes are what we call IID. It means that they are independent and identically distributed. So they are draws from a fixed distribution, which implies that as the sample size increases and becomes large, we can characterize the distribution from which these realizations are drawn. For example, we know that the law of large numbers holds Let's assume for a minute that x is drawn from a normal distribution. We observe x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and so on, and so on, and so on. As the sample size increases, we can actually characterize the underlying distribution. Now, let's consider time series data. So say we have a realization, y1, y2, yt all the way up to y capital T. Subscript T, that is our time index, and capital T is our sample size. The first thing to note is that there's a natural ordering in the sense that y1 always comes before y2, which comes before y3. Now that's important because it allows us to work with conditional models. So we can work with a model for y at time t, conditional on the past observations, yt minus 1, yt minus 2, and so on. So it's important that you distinguish between the conditional expectation of yt and the unconditional expectation of yt. So here we have the black line, which gives us the realizations that we observed. These are the observed data. And we think of each of those as a realization of a random variable, which has a distribution illustrated by the red densities here. So we think of each realization, which we denote yt, as a draw from a random variable, which we also denote yt. Usually we only have one realized sequence of the time series data, and we use both yt to denote the realization and the underlying random variable. Now this is a problem because we have a sample with capital T observations and these are random draws from capital T different distributions. That means that in general we cannot characterize all these underlying distributions. We only have one realization from each of them. The sequence of realizations y1 to y capital T we denote a stochastic process. Now, for a moment, let's do a thought experiment. We have one realization, which we denote y1, 1. So we add a superscript 1, y2, 1, yt, 1, all the way up to y capital T, 1. So that's the first realization. Assume now that we could do this over and over again. So we could simply rerun history and make a new realization. We could get realization m. And so we could do that capital M times, so we get realization capital M. If we look at the cross section of realizations here, so these are imaginary realizations. Now let's say that we now get more and more realizations from the distribution, say here at point five. Now that allows us to characterize the distribution at point T in time. We can define what we call the ensemble mean. So the ensemble mean is given by the expected value of yt. So that is the expected value at point t in time. We add a hat because this is our estimate. We have capital M and we just average yt m and small m goes from 1 to capital M. So note that this allows us to characterize for example, the expected value of y5. 
But here we have capital M realizations from the distribution at that exact point in time. Note that this is fundamentally different from the time average of a realized sample path. That is given by y t bar, which is equal to the average over time y equal 1 to capital T of y i. So here, instead, we are looking at the sample average of one realization here. And note that these two are fundamentally different. Of course, we are not capable of making new draws of history. So we only have one realization of the stochastic process. However, there is a special case. So what if the same sample that we observed over here was indeed a random draw from the same distribution? So now we have a sample here with seven observations, and you can see that the red distributions here are identical over time. Well, that is the case when the data is what we call stationary. So now we have a stationary process. You can see that each of the draws that we have here are draws from the same unconditional distribution. So the precise definition of a stationary process is that the distribution at every point in time is the same. If we look at two subsamples, two different points in time, they should have exactly the same distribution. In this course, however, we will work with a weaker definition, typically, which is what we call weak stationarity. A process is weakly stationary if the mean is constant, unconditional expectation of yt is equal to the mean, which we denote mu. So it's constant over time, it does not depend on t. So over here you can see that the mean of the red distribution here is the same at all points in time. Second, the variance, the unconditional variance of yt is also constant, we can denote that gamma zero. Again, if you look at the red distributions here, you see that they have the same variance at all points in time. Third, we need the covariance between yt and yt minus h is constant and equal to gamma h, and that is for h is equal to 1, 2, and so on. So that means that the covariance has to only depend on the distance between the two observations. Stationarity implies that now, instead of having each observation being a random draw from one distribution, they are now draws from the same distribution. And that actually allows us to use the realized sample path here to characterize the underlying distribution. We also need a second assumption, which is what we call weak dependence. The definition of weak dependence is that yt and yt minus h is approximately independent for h going to infinity. That implies that each observation contains new information about the distribution. Under weak stationarity and weak dependence, the sample average, which we have down here, so that is the average of the sample path that will actually converge to the unconditional expectation of yt, the mean of the process. Now, all of a sudden, if the process is stationary and weakly dependent, we can get information from the sample about the underlying distribution. Also, note that for the cross-sectional data, we work with the assumption of the data being iid, and that implied that a law of large numbers holds but also that a central limit theorem holds in the simplest possible form. Now, the IID assumption is not an assumption that is usually fulfilled for our time series data, but the assumption of weak stationarity and weak dependence replaces the IID assumption from cross-sectional data. First, weak dependence replaces the independence of IID. Second, the identical distribution is replaced by the concept of weak stationarity. That, together, implies that most results for OLS applies in a simple linear regression model. So this is the crucial implication of assuming weak stationarity and weak dependence. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.